yours. Do you not know fine millionaire? Roland, Holger, why all this shouting? Eivor, thank Tyr. I heard shouting. Is something wrong? Holger robbed me, and I demand he be punished. Ha! Huh. Rot disappointed word. Does the deer rub the stream when she takes a drink? Does a cow rub a field when he crops on sweet grass? Eivor, this matter requires sensitive judgment. Will you? Of course. From the beginning, please. Well now, there is no excuse too small, I see. Nothing to keep you from coveting that seat, is there? In Sigurd's absence, who has better claim to oversee these disputes? You might leave them to work it out for themselves, but that would mean... letting go, would it not? Please start again. Tell me all that has happened. I will start. I have been falsely accused by this Saxon Philistine. A filly? What? Are you mocking me? Silence, please. I will hear both of your complaints and render a decision, awarding compensation if needed. Understood? Rowan, tell me your version of these events. Huh. As you are aware, Holger and I are neighbors. Near enough that I often catch him at my stables, stealing my tools. Borrowing! Holger, let him speak. Stealing, borrowing... My point being, I have always allowed him to use whatever he pleased. I greatly admire your Norse generosity and had hoped to match it. But this morning, Holgir stretched the limits of my grace. Entering my stables for their feed, I found my most beautiful, gentle mare stripped of her tail. Bereft, not a strand in sight. I am ashamed to say my natural suspicion drew me to Holgir and how right I was. But when I peered across the lane, there he was, gripping a horsetail brush, slathered with indigo, dragging it across a sheet of painting, Rohan. I was painting. You make it sound so crude. You see? Such willful arrogance. It will take ages for Ilgifu's tail to reach its former length. I demand compensation. I understand. Thank you, Rowan. Holger, let me hear your sight. Eivor. You have known me as a skald for years. You have seen how my poems bring life and joy and wisdom to our people. And you know that my work requires a certain, let us say, freedom. To make use of rare resources to compose my verses. Often when lacking the proper tools, I have made use of novel items. Alvis' walking stick, Tovi's inks, all were given gladly. You cut off my horse's tail to make a brush, you bleed. Rowan? As I was saying, this morning in the throes of poetic reverie, I realized that my latest piece required delicate brushwork. I could have used a frayed stick, some cloth, my hands, but no. I needed something gentler, softer, to make a perfect brush. I needed the fine hairs of a well-raised horse. And so I availed myself of a local resource. You clipped Alfgafur's tail to the rump without asking. It was early. I did not wish to wake you. Thank you, Holger. I believe I understand your position. I believe I have... My horse looks like a fool, Eivor. No handsomer than a donkey now. You must do something. Do not conflate hair with beauty, Rowan. She remains radiant. Elgifer's hair will grow back in no time. Quiet, both of you. Now listen. Olga, Rowan is clearly in the right. You shared the tail from his horse without gaining permission. I borrowed the tail. Borrowed! Does the reality of regrowth not make this a victimless crime? It is a two-victim crime, Holger. Though they are unharmed, you took without asking, and that will not do. As the horse's value has diminished significantly, you will pay Rowan its market price. But the horse was not for sale! Rowan, admit it! My decision is final, Holger. 
And if I do? Pay the man and be done with it. It does. Good. Then by tears, return to your homes. Would you allow me to pay you with a vibrant painting? After all, in some ways you helped in its creation. Absolutely not. Oh, hello, Eivor. Word of our growing settlement has reached out. That Holger. I almost envy him. Let's not walk. East Anglia. Eivor King. Some interesting news. King Chilvulv has sent Chilbert to Shropshire. He hopes to install him as Elderman there. Good for Chilbert. He should do- I gave him only a taste of my knowledge. The rest he will need to fix. One more thing. I do not know if you heard, but Sven- I had not heard, no. It has been rough on her. She's- I want to see the Alliance map. What of Oxenifertshire? Sigurd told me he had business there. Ah, yes. Sigurd is there now, in fact. He bids you- He has partnered with a rebellious thane called Giedrich, and hopes to install Giedrich as Elden- There is an alehouse at the center of Buckingham. Sigurd will meet you there. I should join my brother, then. Where is Buckingham? <laughs> Along the Great Owls River that divides Oxenifordshire, Sigurd will be pleased to see you. You seem sad, Gunnar. I am. Sven was... I know. That he was. Anyhow. May I
I do good work, I'm a... What? Is that what you want? Well, all my ready for uh, fight well, Avor. Eivor, what a pleasure to see you. Let's go. You must row in these waters. This wind would fill the sail. More sail. Sing, my ravens. Can't raise the sail here. Let's have a song. We can use the sail here, Abel. <laughs> sail out. Yeah. 
scan the battlefield. Raven scan the battlefield. The beaten blaze, no trail of red, clothing gaze upon the dead, and horns resounds the mighty horn. For those who fight, for those who fall. Watch my lead. Come here! Look at this little horde!
Look soon in there.
Strike up a tune. the See me, this will get messy. Dock the ship here. Tightly wound. Come, raise a cup and lose some silver. See you, old friend.
Sigurd is not here. I'll ask around. These soldiers always leave a bleeding mess. Are you the alewife here? You are not welcome here. I've had enough trouble with Danes to... I'm not here to cause trouble. I'm looking for my brother, a large Norseman. It was him what caused the ruckus. Him and that other one were here, talking to Thane Giedrich. Then Lady Edwin's soldiers swept in. A fight broke out. Your brother and the tanned fella got away. The soldiers nabbed Giedrich, though. I was sorry to see that. He's well liked in these parts. Which way did my brother go? Hmm. What's it worth to you to find out? I am asking a simple question. Look, Dane, you start a scene or a. You seem to respect this man, Gidrich. If he was talking to my brother, it's because he wants what's best for this Shire. Maybe you're a woman who also wants Axenifort Shire to be free and to decide its own fate. A woman will stand up for her village, who won't be crushed under the boot of oppression. I hope I am. Such a woman would help me find Giedrich's friends. You're right, you are. Your brother and his friend jumped through that window there and scampered off towards the river. It's a good bet they hid in one of them fish houses. When is that each savior left which has been bought? Ah! Oh! Sigurd. Sigurd and Basim headed south. They wouldn't go far. I'll check along the river. It smells like a fish house. Good spot to hide. We could have caught you to bloody giblets, Wolkist. Why so unnerved, brother? It's not like you. Half the soldiers of the Shire are hunting us. You must have noticed. Is that why you haven't come home? You're playing hide and fetch with the Mercian soldiers. Your brother's a busy man, Eivor. Weighed down by pressing duties. It's good to see you again, Basim. Even if you haven't kept my brother trained on the task at hand. It's not my place to lead your brother about like a bridled mare. Now there's an idea. Brother, we should be forging alliances. Send this man back to his warren before he leads you astray. Eivor, gods above, I'm grateful you've joined us. We have made strides towards an alliance, in fact. A local thane called Gidritz has pledged an oath to me. I've heard of him. The alewife also mentioned a Lady Edwin who commands the soldiers. Why not ally with her? Lady Edwin's husband was the Shire's elderman, until Gudrun's army ended his life. Now she's taking up her husband's fight, with a promise of aid from King Alfred of Wessex. Edwin vows revenge on the Danes who stole her husband and her livelihood. From what we know, Alfred is a fearsome king. If Edwin can win his full support, this Shire is lost to Wessex. So to fight her, you've pledged your sword to a minor thane who likely commands a gang of farmers and fishermen. Have faith, Eivor. A few hundred Saxons armed with hayforks and billhooks can be terrified. Gods! All men and women, noble or peasant, have within them the seeds of something greater. This is true. Sometimes greater than the average mind can fathom. Well, Edwin has Giedrich in shackles now. All your plotting has turned to ash. Not if we act soon. She dragged her prisoners to the Longhouse. With you here, we can mount the surprise strike. If Gidrich is our best chance for an alliance, let's see it done.
Sigurd, has Basim talked you into something of little reward? Eivor, have you lost hope in my Warcraft? I heed Basim's wisdom, but he follows my lead, always. He has the look of one who trusts none but himself. Basim is secretive by nature, but he is wise and forthright. And he has opened my eyes to a magnificent truth. He has promised me a reward so unusual, so incredible, it will shatter your mind to shards. Brother, our bond has the iron heft of a war axe. Do not let Basim and his prophecies of good fortune sway you from our simple goal. Never. Our goal is fixed. We shall soon be the lords of Mercia, then all of England. But Basim has a deep insight. He's read wisdom in the lines of my face, and heard the litany of my forefathers, and... Well, there will be time enough for my saga later. <laughs>